gamers, gals, and non-binary pals. We had a little too much original content lately. A little too, one too many discussions, well thought out points, and comment sections telling me why Pearly is secretly just the best deck of all time. And I want to return back to our roots. What this channel was truly founded upon, and what funded me through college, and, and <laughs> paying for my extravagant dinners through clip money. That is good old MBT YGO reactions. What the heck is going on with YCSs? And because you used the HE double hockey sticks word in a title, you, Joseph, are in fact going to hell. So, let's give it a watch, and I want to see what our favorite white boy has to say about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! events as a whole. But first, this video was brought to you guys by Imperium Duelist. Imperium makes some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! accessories and apparel, full stop. In fact, I religiously used their Cherubim Oversleeves for over a year at one point. And speaking of accessories, we've come together to create the hopping around playmat. You're all my little drama frogs and I wanted to create a piece of art that is actually some form of usable merch. It comes in two colors, monochrome and hot pink, which is my favorite color by the way, and I am in love with how they turned out, both the single and two player variants. Pick up a playmat, be sure to use my code Stevie10 on all products for their site for a 10% off discount and be sure to tag us when yours comes in. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, AKA MBT, and today we're talking about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! So if you wanna play Yu-Gi-Oh! at anything resembling a bigger than local level, your options are either to use Master Duel or check out the paper product. For the former, competitive play opportunities are pretty well defined. For a long time, it was just the MCS. But these days, Konami has rolled out not only a legitimate pathway to worlds through the cup system, but also the Challenger Cups, which give a more tournament-style experience instead of just letting you endlessly grind a ladder. First of all, Duelist Cups are some of the most unfun and least interesting ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole. I get it. If you want to watch like Joshua Schmidt, Ryan Yu, Jesse Cotton, whoever, if you want to watch them like grind it out and actually make worlds, for those specific individuals, I am completely fine with it. But let's be real. MBT and like Farfa have way better things and more important things to do in their lives than to grind out the Master Duel Duelist Cup for like 72 hours straight. Like they have literal better things to do. But also, shout outs to my boy, United Airlines official, for topping a Challenger Cup. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is that that. Hey, Lever Festecum, all right? Sit in paper, however, you've got a lot more options. Of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with the opportunities available at your local OTS store, uh, both the tournaments that are usually held regularly, as well as championship events. Higher level play extends to things like regionals, nationals, worlds, and of course, YCSs. But YCSs are currently in a bit of a crisis? I don't even know if I can really call it a crisis, because they're still happening, depending on where you live. I just don't <laughs> really understand year. why they're being managed the way that they are, what the end goal for Konami is, or if they're even gonna stick around? They face kind of two compounding crises. Firstly, there haven't been YCSs announced in Europe for like a really disturbing amount of time. And secondly, the community has been in its feelings this week about the lack of coverage at the YCSs that do occur. When you look at the YCSs that get covered, they are European YCSs, which by the way, we haven't gotten one in I think about a full year now, or American ones. And American ones, they come every like month or every other month, maybe at most. But the American production value is just so shaky relative to the European one. And basically anything that's not in those two regions just gets completely ignored. Oceanic YCSs, es especially Latin American YCSs, those YCSs are basically just fucking fried. I'm sorry, Lofton, but you're never getting coverage for your 300 YCS top. They were gonna ask the question, what the hell is going on with YCSs? And let's begin with a brief history of them. Wow! So pre-2010, when Upper Deck Entertainment had a significant amount of rights relative to Yu-Gi-Oh!, they ran these things called the Shonen Jump Championship Series events. At the time, these were like the big boys of competitive expertise, and a lot of the individuals that are powerhouses these days cut their teeth at those events. When all that legal nastiness occurred, Upper Deck lost the ability to host these events. And almost immediately with the closure of the Shonen Jump Championship events with what else but SJC Edison, YCS Washington debuted just a couple of months later, run by Konami. YCSs are run in every single TCG region, which includes, of course, the United States, Canada, Mexico, all of LATAM, and also Oceania, but Europe as well. In you know, theory. As someone who's been to a number of these events, they are a ton of fun. Depending on the location, they can draw anywhere from about 300 to 3,000 competitors, and usually it ends up being something like a 9 to 13 round tournament held over the course of two days before a top cut, depending on the size of the entry. Over the course of those two days, if you scrub out early, which I would never do, you can enter really cool side events like giant cards, winamats, time wizard, rivalry of warlords, 
rewards. And above all, they're really great opportunities to just feel the community aspect of the game. One of the most important parts of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is being around Yu-Gi-Oh! players, and it's so nice to share a space with individuals who, at minimum, have one thing in common with you for an entire weekend. I, I guess I'll ask the stupid question, which is, why do these exist at all? So now that we've talked about what a YCS is, let's talk about their justification. This next portion They're is cool. complete hearsay, but every person that I've spoken to that's been even remotely involved in running these events has pretty much exactly this to say. YCS has cost a ton of money. It's a huge bureaucratic nightmare to run an event like this, and they almost never end up in the black. That's because outside of the minimal entry that you have to pay to enter a YCS, you basically got a captive audience in a big warehouse for an entire weekend not purchasing your product. I remember when I wasn't banned and, you know, was able to play the TCG, there was a store owner that really wanted to run regionals. But when she was doing like the math regarding, you know, getting the venue, getting the minimal entry fee, getting the entry fee, whatever. Unfortunately, she was just like, yeah, I like double, I like double check the math. It's kind of impossible for me to run regionals or host regionals just because it just costs way too much money. Like she would have been down like $10,000 minimum. And like not everyone is going to buy like 20 boxes worth of product. So that's not going to make up the entry fee. So that's not going to make up like, you know, renting the venue cost and like all the labor costs and blah, 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 blah. In reality, unfortunately, YCSs and these sort of events just run into the red every time. How hands-on is Konami with these kind of events? They will offer you like judges, but most of the time judges are just going to be handpicked by like the store owner. Additionally, Konami will like send you product. Like if you tell them like, oh, I'm going to run a regional, they'll send you like maybe like a couple boxes worth of product to hand out as like entry pricing. But outside of exactly entry pricing, stores technically don't have to give you anything. They will give you like the top cut mats, they'll give you like the boxes, but like they'll give you like the deck boxes, but they won't give you like, you know, booster boxes for first place or anything. If you want to be like extremely technical, there is no difference between first and eighth place at a, at a regional. There just literally isn't from a pricing perspective. With cards they already have, they don't need to buy new ones. And in order to host these events at all, you have to be able to pay an enormous judging staff, rental fees on the location, you've got to get food in there, you've got to get vendors in there, and often you have to get broadcast in there as well. So these <laughs> Thank you, sir and or. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna fucking Adam do something funny with that edit, but holy shit, that was so fucking loud. <laughs> You gotta get food in there, you've gotta get vendors in there, and often you have to get broadcasting in there as well. So if these events aren't really turning a profit, why are they being run? Well, firstly, it kind of justifies paper play. If there's not a robust tournament structure surrounding Yu-Gi-Oh, why buy the cards? There's a comparative tournament scene in Master Duel. Playing with digital pieces of paper is just as good as playing with physical pieces of paper if there's no reason to go out and play against anyone else in person. I've seen this floated a lot as to the reason the YCSs exist in the first place, but it doesn't really ring true for me. From my perspective, if YCS has disappeared tomorrow, there would already be a justification for paper play, and that is the rest of the tournament scene. You're still gonna have locals, you're still gonna have OTS champs. There's even like a progression to doing well in these events. You test at your locals so you can go to your regionals in your area. You do well at your regionals so you can qualify to make it to the national tournament. That national tournament, which is functionally just a YCS with only good players, could theoretically get you to worlds. Like there's already tons of opportunities for paper play that build upon each other and keep you invested. YCS are just this weird, huge, additional tournament that happens every couple of months. The main thing that uh, YCSs justify paper play for is being able to be successful in paper play at an event that isn't skill gapped by your region. This is some insane Stevie theory fucking gapaholicness. So you guys are gonna have to fucking tolerate me for a minute. The main thing is, is that at a YCS, you could guarantee that your top cut is going to be consisting of probably the best players in the country. And maybe, you know, just like a couple of random stragglers or a couple of people who are like breaking out onto the scene. Like you could consider that a YCS in the later rounds is only going to consist of people who are actually good at the game and that your accomplishment at doing well at a YCS is extremely valid in the eyes of in the eyes of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players. Oh, laser eyes. But regional events, uh, Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh talked about this before regional events and like european open slash nationals are kind of hit and miss in regards to how real they're considered in terms of like competitive successions a california regional a new york regional a philadelphia regional those regionals have such a robust player base and population filled to skilled players that doing well at these events you know to be considered a notable achievement however if you live if you're living in the middle of fucking you know, Detroit or Nebraska 
and you win like an 80 person regional. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't know how to tell you this, but your regional was kind of, but your regional was kind of fake. <laughs> Second reason, and in my opinion, the more compelling reason that people think YCSs have stuck around is that they are a really good advertisement. Regionals are fine, but you cram 50 to 400 people into a hall the size of a Waffle House, and after about 10 rounds, you're going to see some shit. Players are tired. They're cranky. They're playing a whole bunch of rounds in a singular day. There's real concrete stakes to it. For a lot of players, topping a YCS feels kind of perpetually out of reach just because of how few slots are afforded. But at a regional, if you get like in the top quarter of people who entered, usually you can punch your card for an invite. There's not always food available, so people are hangry and cranky. Inversely, YCSs, as a huge celebration of all things Yu-Gi-Oh, almost always feature people who are happy to be there, either buying cards or playing in side events or scrubbing out of the main, talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, interacting with it, and chilling with their friends. It's a fantastic opportunity for Konami to generate a whole bunch of stuff that will eventually go in an ad for the product. I have a mild problem with with that, the only people who are actively watching YCSs are mainly just people who are already competitive players. Like you're not roping in, you know, someone who's like on the fence regarding, you know, a YCS, regarding, you know, diving into paper play by showing them a YCS because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a horrible game to watch in, in practice, but you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> people who are already like familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh! scene, they don't need more reassurance. This is an event that only serves to kind of reassure people's thoughts on, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a cool game. And if you're already into Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, yeah, why is this are cool to watch and amazing to be at, but they're not exactly advertising in the sense of we're using this to increase our player base. It's more just like we're using this to solidify our player base. It's not a bad idea, but usually when you get into the business logistics of spending like tens of thousands of dollars, maybe even hundreds at times in order for advertising, you kind of want to see some real return at a certain point. Look at all these people hanging out and enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh together. Look at all these top players competing against each other. Check wow, out how the new incredible. cards have impacted the metagame and what people are doing with them. Them. You're permitted to take a huge loss on these events because essentially you're just paying for a huge ad. But if that's the justification for a YCS, why isn't there coverage of many of them? This discussion has been brewing over the last couple of weeks and it's kind of reached a boiling point just because of what happened at the most recent YCS in Rio. Christian Urena, now the duelist with the most YCS tops of any other, was returning to his third consecutive YCS after winning the previous two back to back. That shit like never happens, by the way. I think one other person has ever done it and it's exactly Billy Break, but Christian was looking to do the unthinkable and go back to back to back, a feat that had never been accomplished. Looking to prevent him from doing so were some of the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh players of all time that had also made the trip. Some from the area, but many on flights, hoping to test their mettle against the best of the best. This was also the first YCS that Legacy of Destruction was legal, a proving grounds for one of the scariest decks in modern memory, Tenpai Dragon, Tenpai! as well as an extremely powerful engine in Melodious. Like five or six Yu-Gi-Oh plot lines were all converging around this one event, and the weak end of Rio, we all just sort of had to refresh a lampy post on Twitter. There was no broadcasting there, which is pretty typical for Latin American YCSs. There was no paper reporting, which is frustrating. Coverage on the webpage was just 10 consecutive rounds of standings and then the winner post. This is part of a pattern in YCS coverage in recent years. Tons of events, even the ones that are hosted in the United States, don't have broadcasting attached. One of the most insane things that I still find just so questionable is why do written YCS reports exist? Why do they still have people that are like taking notes and doing play-by-plays for like snake eye mirrors, you know what I mean? Catch to them. Occasionally that's for logistical reasons. Like some locations have a state law that prevents broadcasting except by individuals with like union accreditation. And Konami has an in-house team that they port between states and occasionally countries that isn't unionized because they're freelancers or ICs. And if a YCS isn't in the United States, they don't really want to fly out individuals to do written coverage of those events. But like, why? They're already taking a loss on these events. If the purpose is to be an ad, what use is the ad if no one sees what's happening? I just expected that they would start with the broadcast elements and work backwards from there, building the event around the ability to generate footage. When this was brought up on Twitter, a lot of people started saying things like, well, attendance is still high. And yeah, that's true. But I don't think this is a case of Konami seeing what they can get away with. I think the explicit purpose of these events is to do something they're just not doing for some reason. Attendance is high, not because of Konami's YCS efforts or whatever. Attendance is high for two reasons. Yugi tubers are fucking carrying this game. I'm not 
not even joking. If like two you major YouTubers decided to stop making content, this game would die 100%. And secondly, the reason why attendances is going up or is still remaining relatively high relative to what it used to be in the past is because everything is higher now. Every player pool has increased thanks to, you know, stuff like the internet and people getting older who grew up with the game and now have the financial means to travel to these events? Yu-Gi-Oh! has increased its player pool. It's like saying League of Legends has increased its player pool. Yeah, no shit. Any theoretically successful game or relatively like okay doing game is gonna increase its player base over time as long as they're doing something marginally okay. Especially when you're backed by fucking four kids TV and years of like psyop training for telling kids to buy Legacy of Destruction. Whatever is irking North American duelists about the lack of coverage of course pales in comparison to what's going on in EU territories, which is nothing. There's been no YCSs for months, no announcement of upcoming YCSs for the new season. They're just kind Poor of without Europeans, an understanding bro. of Poor what's Joshua going on shit. relative to competitive organized play. This all culminated in the announcements for upcoming YCSs in the post-national season, one of which hasn't even been decided on yet. YCSs are a unique and exciting part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! experience. They're one of the last things in this godforsaken world that we can all get together and do in person as one group of people with a shared interest. But recently, I just don't know what's going on with them. I think their purpose as a justification for paper play is filled in elsewhere, and their purpose as an advertisement is severely diminished by the fact that we are getting no coverage, and we don't know if any are ever going to be held in the EU ever again. I would hate to see something as interesting and engaging as competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and the stories it creates take a back seat to the whims of a bunch of boardmen. Members. And I hope that we get coverage soon and Joshua Schmidt gets another couple of wins under his belt, I guess. That's it. See ya. Damn, Konami really is doing its best to fucking cook Yu-Gi-Oh! alive. Theoretically, attendance is high, but as soon as it starts dropping, it's the end times. Anyways, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on YCS as a whole. Do you think they're going to stick around long term? Do you think they're going to not? Blah, 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 blah. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.